I was exploring around on Google Earth one day when I found something strange in the desert. So strange that I decided to go see it for myself. See, this lake behind me is not supposed to be there. And boy oh did this trip not go the way I thought it would either. The whole thing started when I found this image on Google Earth. I'm over here, next to a lake that formed years ago due to a unique interaction between a river, a reservoir, and an ancient cutoff river bend. And since the Google Earth image was several years old, I wanted to see if the lake was still there and what else I could find. So I told my girlfriend it would be nice there and drove the trusty van to southern Utah. I started with a short hike where I discovered a neat little line of trash and driftwood hundreds of feet above the lake, representing the highest level it ever got to 40 years ago. It took a minute for that to sink in, that 40 years ago, the shoreline was right here. But since it's no longer connected to the reservoir, this lake is all on its own. It's a bizarre, unintended consequence of a dam 200 miles away, and it feels like a glitch in the universe. Anyway, my main reason for being here was to see the other side, but this attempt did not go well. First, I got my croc stuck in the mud and couldn't find it for 20 minutes. I lost my croc. So maybe camo was not the best croc color of choice here. Even better, the boat had a hole in it, which made it less floaty. <laughs> I'm not swimming. We're sinking. And it took so long that we immediately had to turn back. Getting out of here. We made it to the other side of the lake, but it's getting dark and there's a lot of mosquitoes. See, this is more than the story of an odd, overlooked place in the desert, but also an awkward YouTube guy who just can't seem to get it right. This? This is a bridge. What am I doing? This is where I wanted to tell you about the 16,000 Olympic swimming pools of mud that enters the lake here every year. Which is true, but I've never actually seen an Olympic swimming pool, and I don't know why we always use them to measure stuff. Anyway, all that mud produced a fascinating landscape, although not exactly scenic in the traditional sense. The river used to meet Lake Powell here, dropping all that mud in this general area. But then California got all thirsty and the lake dropped, but because of the mud, the side canyons stayed full. And the really cool part is that this mud dam works both ways. Imagine the stranded lake here dries up eventually, and then the reservoir comes back up to this level, there's gonna be a massive flood of water back in to refill this lake. And that would be really cool to see. Anyway, this lake has been separated for about four years now. And that creates an isolated ecosystem containing trapped fish and other creatures, which makes you wonder, what's gonna to happen to all these trapped fish? Will Lake Powell ever rise high enough to rescue the lake? Or will it dry out completely? Do aliens live here? Who knows? But I hope you learned something. I know I did. Anyway, my van broke on the way home. See you in the next adventure.